Okay, so in this video, what I want to do is show you where students get mixed up when they're solving trigonometric equations with the half angle and the double angle. Because typically, I can help students understand trigonometric equations, how to solve them and how to get their solutions. But then once we go ahead and transfer to the half angle, the double angle, and using these multiple angles, that's where students get mixed up. They have confusion with the solving on an interval or solving all solutions. So what we're going to do, let's go and work these three examples. And I'm going to help you understand the solutions, not just with the unit circle, but also by using a graphical approach. So the first example we're going to look at is the sine of theta is equal to one half. Now it's important to understand what we're trying to solve for this equation. We're trying to say the sine of theta is equal to one half. Well, remember, theta represents the angle, right? So it's the sine of what angle is equal to one half. Now, if we look at the unit circle, we recognize there's infinite many of these answers, right? So that's why a lot of times we like to deal with the interval of zero to two pi to keep things you know, rather simple and understand them from the unit circle. So if by looking at the unit circle, we recognize we're gonna have angle, first answer is going to be pi over six. So therefore, and the reason why this is pi over six, because this coordinate point here is going to be a square root of three over two comma one half. Now, that's not the only solution though. That's not the only angle where the y coordinate is equal to one half. We also have this angle right here, which is at five pi over six. And this angle is a negative square root of three over two comma one half. Okay, those are gonna be your two solutions on the interval of zero to two pi. Now, let's look at this from a graphical approach. If you're looking at the sine of graph, or the graph of sine, right, we have a max here and a min here of negative one. Now, if we're looking for, this is the sine of theta, right? This is the graph of sine of theta. And if we want to intersect that at the line of one half, we'd say here's one half, and we could see, well, when did these graphs intersect? Well, they're gonna intersect here and here, right? Now, again, we know those answers, right? Its angle is pi over six, and here it's going to be a five pi over six, right? So you can see the solutions from zero to two pi, there's only these two, right? That's the only time it intersects when sine is equal to a positive one half. So hopefully you can see this relationship between the unit circle as well as the graph, or at least the initial period on zero to two pi. The thing that's interesting is what about happens when we do a two pi? Like what is happening to this graph? And what I want you to see from this case, let me actually just do a solution set. This would be pi halves and five pi over six. Now, what's happening with the graph when we do a sine of two theta is equal to one half. Let me rewrite that actually. So that's going to be the sine of two theta is equal to one half. Well, one thing I want you to understand is the period is now going to change, right? Because typically the period, remember, was two pi divided by b, where b is going to be two. So now my period is pi. Now, instead of the graph repeating every two pi, the graph repeats every pi. So if let's put pi right here, now I'm going to have two intervals. So I'm gonna go up. So we can say here's two pi, and let's say here's one half. Now we can say, oh, now I have four solutions on the interval zero to two pi. So how are we gonna find these two solutions? Now, a couple things that we can do is when you're looking at your solutions, you know, we know that in this case, we can write theta is equal to pi over six, as well as theta is equal to five pi over six. Now, in this case, if I wanted to find these, I could just rewrite these as a two theta. So now I could just say, you know, two theta is equal to pi over six and then divide by two, and you get theta is equal to pi over 12. The problem with this is that only gives you one solution, right? That takes you this angle says to here. And then this angle, this two theta equals five pi over six, right? This is gonna have the same solutions, but if you divide by two, that's gonna give you theta equals five pi over 12, which is just this solution. But what about these two solutions? How are you gonna find these two solutions? And to do that, what we need to understand is what's going on with the graph of sine. This graph is never stopping, right? It's never gonna stop. And so the important thing I want you to understand is this solution right here. How do I find this solution based on my knowledge of the sine graph? Well, this graph repeats every two pi. So no matter what my solution is, if I add two pi to it, I'm gonna get to another solution. And I can add two pi infinite many times as well as subtract two pi infinite many times. And so that's why we use the, the variable n. Now we can also look at this from the unit circle, right? If you have this solution, right, five pi or six, you can also, or let's just look at pi or six, you can go around the unit circle and that's also gonna give you a circle. Like if you here have pi over six, and if you go around, you add two pi to it, it's gonna take you to another solution. So when you're trying to find the solutions on an interval, 
between zero and two pi, it's not just as easy as saying two pi is equal to my answers. No, what we're gonna need to do is say two pi is gonna equal to all of my solutions. So it's gonna be pi over six plus two pi n, right? Because you can always add two pi n to your answer to keep on getting infinite many answers in the positive or negative direction. We can do the same thing with over here. So this would be a two theta equals five pi over six plus two pi n. So now I'm gonna divide everything by two. When I divide everything by two here, I get theta equals pi over six plus pi n. And here I get theta equals five pi over 12 plus pi n. So now I can find these. And you can see instead of, if this is, if this is pi over 12, right? Which I was supposed to be, I didn't divide by two very well. If this is pi over 12, well now to get to my next answer, I'm not adding pi, but how much am I adding? I'm adding, I'm not adding two pi, I'm adding pi. So the solution set in this one, the solution set is going to be pi over 12, and then let's add another pi. In terms of 12, that'd be 12 pi over 12, which is 13 pi over 12. Now I can't add another 12 pi over 12 because again, two pi is 24 pi over 12, right? And if you add another 12, that'd be 25 pi over 12. But then I can go to this one, which is five pi over 12. And what would happen if I add another pi there? Well, again, 12 pi over 12 plus five pi over 12 is 17 pi over 12. Let's do the last one, which is going to be my half angle. So we gotta understand what's happening in a period here. Well, now we have two pi divided by one half, which is equal to four pi. So if my graph originally was going to repeat in a period, now this graph is going to take twice as long. So when I go ahead and graph this, my graph is gonna look something like that, right? It's getting elongated. So when we look at this solution, one half, we recognize there's only gonna be two solutions on the interval zero to two pi. And how do we find those two solutions? Well, we do the same thing we did here. We take our half angle or whatever's inside of a function. And actually here's the trick. It doesn't matter what is inside your function. It doesn't matter if it's the half angle, the double angle, a third, the triple angle. You take whatever's inside your function and you set it equal to your all solutions. And then that's when you go ahead and solve for your theta. And then you simply just add the values that you need to match the interval or the restriction. In this case, all we're simply gonna do is I'm gonna take theta divided by two equals pi over six plus two pi n, and then theta divided by two equals five pi over six plus two pi n. Now, to solve for theta, I'm gonna multiply by two. Now watch what happens when I multiply by two. I get a theta equals a two pi over six, two pi over six plus four pi n, and here I get a theta equals a 10 pi over six plus a four pi n. I need to multiply by two times everything. So and therefore I get a pi over three, which is the reduced form, and a five pi over three, which is the reduced form. And this is very important because I can't add four pi any longer to this, can I? Right? If I add four pi, that's gonna take me way outside of my restriction. So my solution set in this case is just going to be pi over three and five pi over three. So what I want you to understand from this is when you find your solutions for your trigonometric equation on the unit circle, which most students can eventually get to the point, when you need to apply your multiple angles, you need to understand the graph is being either compressed or the graph is being stretched. So what you're gonna wanna do is understand all the solutions based on your original equation and then apply them by setting your all solutions with your multiple angles and then go ahead and solve and then add your values that you need to match the interval that you have. Hope this was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.